Welcome to this Max QDA video tutorial on teamwork and file management. In this video, we'll show you how Max QDA 2020 can help you work in teams and which of its functions allow you to exchange data between team members. When you're conducting a research project, you'll often be working as part of a team rather than just by yourself. That's why Max QDA offers you a range of tools and solutions for collaborating with others. In this video, we're going to look at data storage and transferring data between computers in the context of teamwork. Let's start with a brief overview of how to back up your data with MaxQDA. First, you need to know that technically speaking, every MaxQDA project basically consists of two parts. Firstly, your actual project is saved in a so-called project file with the extension MX20. This project file contains all your analysis steps and most of your data such as Word documents, images and transcripts. Very large files and audio and video recordings on the other hand are stored in the so-called externals folder. You'll find this folder by default in your MaxQDA documents folder. Audio and video files are always saved in the externals folder. For PDF and image files, you can determine the threshold value yourself, that is, the size above which the file will be saved in the externals folder. You can find this threshold value in the settings that you can open by clicking on the gear symbol. Here you can also change the location of the externals folder, for example, to place it on a network drive. So how can you send a project or parts of a project from one team member to another? For this, you have three options. First, the simplest option. Drag and drop your project file and the associated externally stored data, such as video files or audio files, in their entirety from one computer to the next, for example, via email, a network drive, or a cloud service. Second, you can also send individual parts of your project to other team members, such as a single document with your added codes, memos, and variables, or alternatively, you can send only your code system. And thirdly, and finally, you can merge two complete project files into one with just a few clicks. Let's take a closer look at these three different options. Let's start with the first, and say you want to transfer your project with everything in it from one computer to another. For example, to the computer of a team member. To do this, simply drag the project file onto a USB drive. For example, by right-clicking the MX20 file, opening the USB drive folder, and inserting the file there. And if the file isn't too big, you can also simply send it via email. But because my project includes videos and audio files saved in the externals folder, you'll need to include the externals folder as well. For this, you need to create a zip file of all the files stored here by clicking on External Files and then Bundle External Data Files. Then save this zip file on your USB as well. Alternatively, you could also simply copy the entire contents of the externals folder and then paste them into the folder of the same name on the target computer. On the target computer, you can now copy the project file from the USB to a local folder before opening it. Let's now save it to the desktop and open it. If you can, try to avoid opening a project file directly from the USB, because if the USB is removed by mistake, the project file could be damaged. The same applies to cloud services that synchronize the project file while you work with it. You can now insert the link to the externally stored data into the project file by clicking on External Files again, but this time choosing Unpack Bundle Data Files and selecting the zip file you exported earlier. Now you will have transferred the project and all of your external files, and you can continue working from here. It's a good idea to create regular backups of the shared project file when you're working in a team and to label each of these files with the current date and your initials. The easiest way to do this is to use Save As. Now, for the second option I mentioned earlier, you're not transferring the complete project, but only individual components of it. 
This function is especially useful when one team member has added new files to their own project, which other team members don't have yet, or if several people have coded the same data and only want to transfer their code assignments. To share individual parts of your project, click on Teamwork in the Home menu, and then the Export option. In the window that appears, choose which documents, document groups or sets you want to share. Once you've clicked Continue, in the next window you can then choose which codes you want to transfer. You can select individual codes to export, or export all your codes at once. Now you need to give your exchange file a unique name and save it. Then drag this exchange file onto your USB, but you can also send it easily via email. On the target computer, open the project you want to import the data into, click Teamwork in the Home menu again, but this time choose the Import option. Now select the Exchange file you created earlier, and the data in it will be imported into your project on this computer. You can also select which documents, codes, variables, summaries and memos you want to import. If a document already exists in the target project, the codes assigned to that document in the Source project that is, the project from which you're transferring the data, are automatically added to the corresponding document in the target project. Finally, the third option, where you want to merge two different MaxQDA projects into one new project, so that all the content from both projects is combined in one project file. To start off, first open one of the two projects that you want to merge. Now you're going to add another project to this already open project. To do this, click on the Merge Projects button in the Home menu and select the project you want to merge with the currently open project. So how does the merging process happen from here? Well, certain elements can only exist once in a MaxQDA project. So in this dialog box that appears, you need to select which project memo, which code memo, and which logbook you want either preserved or overwritten in the merging process. If you don't change the default settings, the files of the already open project will be preserved in the new merged project file. Documents and document groups with the same name will be created twice by default. But if you check the box Don't Import Already Existing Documents, only those documents will be added to the project which don't already exist there. You can also choose whether document groups or sets should be merged or not by checking or unchecking the box Merge Document Groups slash Document Sets with the same name. This way, the documents in the already open project will be supplemented, in other words, added to, with the documents from the second project. And in this case, documents with the same name will not be created twice. Only the codes assigned to the same name document in the second project are added to that same name document in the already open project. If the same segment has been assigned with the same code in the same document in both projects, MaxQDA considers this a match, and that spot is then displayed in the Merge project as a single coded segment. In other words, the new project file created by the merger contains all the documents which are contained in both projects, as well as all the codes and coded segments from both projects. And it's also helpful to remember that when merging two project files, MaxQDA creates a backup copy of the open project file from which you started the merging process. This way you can always go back to the previous copy of your project before you merged it if you're in any doubt. The project file that you've added to the open project will remain unchanged in any case. And that's it. That was our overview of MaxQDA's data storage options and its basic functions for transferring data between team members. You can find further video tutorials on other topics on the MaxQDA YouTube channel. Until then, all the best with your project.